So, Frank tweeted the other day, new episode of the Potty C will be live streamed Wednesday, 3 p.m. Please subscribe to Dratnos on YouTube so he gets 100k subs or he won't show up, he said. If he gets 100k, he will show up in a suit, though. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to show up in a suit. Hello? Are you suited up? Pop open the camera. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You are, yeah, I mean you are f***ing popping. Holy Frank shit. made a promise and I gotta I gotta keep it. Oh my god. What was it? This is such a classy podcast now. <laughs> Alright, sweet. Let's uh let's get it popping. 301, only one minute late start time. Beautiful. Alright, uh what are we talking about today? Yeah, we got a few things. We've got uh there's some M plus stuff to talk about. There's that retention chart going around that I think uh we can do a little bit of talking. We uh, you had a bolstering video. In response to like titles is bolstering video that I think is probably we can all talk about bolstering a little bit because that was last week. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. There's the roadmap that came out. There's the hero talents that came out. Those were things that I thought of as things we could talk about on our podcast. I don't know if you guys have any uh, any topics over the past week though that you'd also like to add to the agenda. Well, I'm... they announced the esports too. That's oh yeah, the MDI and AWC. Yep, MDI. Perfect. And AWC. Yeah. So I think like we can probably do the meat of it on roadmap. Sure, some time on hero talents, which I mean, that'll just be like a constantly developing thing. Yeah. And then the MDI thing, I think, is like there's a lot of good stuff to talk about there. Dratnos has probably, I'm sure, better insight into stuff like that. And then um, we have, yeah, we can probably just start by going over the, you know, last week in Mythic Plus because we did bring it up last week about like how, oh, Mythic Plus retention. And then like we had the Tyrannical week, we had the Bolstering week, uh, and like seeing where those ended up and then uh, kind of going on from there. I didn't get to do as many keys last week. Yeah, I did a, I did a few. I had, I started my like alt parade, uh, cause I, you know, finished prog. So I was able to, to get in there and start, start gearing my alt. So inflicted some 440 characters on some unsuspecting friends on bolstering week, um, which in some ways it kind of helps cause I didn't accidentally bolster anything cause I didn't kill anything. So it sort of, sort of works, but I mean, some of these dungeons with bolstering, like what what business do those flowers in Everbloom have with interacting with that affix is my question. The dogs in Wakecrest too, we have on death yeah. affix. Yeah, I mean, uh... yeah, I feel like there's some things where you can kind of play around it. So like one thing I thought was going to be terrible was like not even the dogs in Wakecrest, but uh, pulling the like a bunch of captains and things on top of the witches and like the etch mobs and like thinking that was going to be hell. But really, that's just like normal bolstering and you can just play around it and priority target and it's fine. It's really just there's a few spots where also uh, Throne of the Tides is like kind of annoying near the end. Like there's just a couple of spots where it seems I, I think it just kind of goes into the question we had last week. Why are they not tuning these dungeons? Like why if you're if you're someone whose job is, you know, encountered as uh, I don't know who who does these nerfs. I'm assuming the encounter design team or the people who design dungeons or if there's like a there's like a mythic plus team. Usually I think they do a big thing of all of that. Like, how do you not look at the Everbloom lashers or the dogs and just be like, oh, so that's wrong. Right. Those things spawning spitefuls, uh, sanguine, bursting, all of those things, all of the affix like things. They just should not do that um, pretty clearly. And we've been wondering where the like broader tyrannical boss tuning has been for a couple weeks. I think we're now we're getting into that again this week. But those are like maybe but, a little bit harder changes to make. Like, but where are like the very obvious like this should not be the you know I, I, I'm I'm with you, Dorky. It's kind of weird why it's not happening. So the, the even weirder part is that they actually have been proactively fixing a lot of the bugs and the exploits and the tech that people have been doing. So there's actually this one thing that people started doing. I, I showed it on stream like two, three days ago. In Everbloom, you can make the second boss not charge, where it wouldn't spawn any puddles at all, by just standing under the mob that does the charge. And that like literally got fixed within like two days. Like Tettles could even make a video in time for it to get fixed. <laughs> the the Merv's on Rise too, the first boss where you bug it out, that's been fixed as well. So they've been very proactive with fixing a lot of these bugs, but somehow there's no tuning. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm kind of just perplexed by it as well, because like it, it feels like they are looking at the dungeons, but they don't see the flowers bolstering as a problem, which 
I don't understand what they want us to do in that place. If that is like, if that's their legitimate, like if they're just like, oh yeah, bolstering is supposed to make this hard when there's packs with flowers in it. But well, man, the flower specifically. So they've run into this in almost every season and they either in the development of the dungeons, they remove those things from happening ever. Like, like you go in, uh, you guys could probably give a bunch more examples than me, but anytime there's a bunch of small mobs that have way less health than everything else, they usually do not have affixes associated with them. And they, they fix that problem either in the development of the dungeons entirely, or they retroactively fix that into a season because of things like bolstering and sanguine and stuff like that. And these mobs seem like problems that they've solved before, and they've made that same decision of, uh, of and I they just, they're not doing it this time specifically. But I, I think it's just because... Whatever they have on the schedule to do at Blizzard, I guess it's working on the War Within or maybe Season 4 Mythic Plus, right? That's coming out. Um, didn't we see a similar tuning thing last Season 2? Like, you had initial tuning and then you kind of didn't have anything for a few weeks. Uh, and then it kind of started happening again. Is that what happened last time? Yeah, was, they, yeah. Got dark. they did a bunch in the beginning and then... Kind of nothing between then TGP sort of happened and they did like a little bit of TGP tuning where they fixed like certain things that people were doing in TGP. And then kind of nothing until we got to the whole uh, nerfing the meta, uh, nerfing the god comp. And then after they nerfed the god comp, they did a little bit of tuning again to try to adjust and accommodate for that. But really nothing in between. Season one was a little bit better, right? Because season one, it was, I remember even like a month in, they targeted Ruby life pools and, you know, nerfed a lot of the annoying stuff in the trash in the upper ring there, right? So oh, that, that one, I big. think they, they were a little bit more proactive with, but it does seem like, I don't know, because again, like they are making hot fixes to the dungeons to fix these cheese issues, which is a new policy, but it's weird that, I mean, they literally just must have, they must be looking at the dungeons and they must like bolstering flowers and that i just don't understand i don't no i i it's just such a different view of m plus I, than i have i don't think so because I, I see where you're coming from but that would also imply that you think that they're watching tyrannical waycrest keys and they think that the thorns are good when there's, there's like you've seen them solve problems enough to know that they definitely don't like they fix things like that usually so there so are maybe it's just the bug fix team and the balance team are different like <sighs> like those are just different levels of priority for these things yeah i don't think they're different teams i think they're the same people probably and it's that it's different levels of priority yeah at some point they were like they don't like we are viewing it like this like oh well they're fixing bugs but they're not you know fixing the goddamn game or whatever like they're <laughs> they're like they they view fixing the cheese and the bugs as like this much higher uh impact bad thing than the the way that the dungeons play part of that could be that you don't run into a lot of these problems on a 15 or a 20 because it's just so low health that it's like way less impactful to you um but yeah i don't know i they just probably have not they, maybe they have it in like shifts like they're they're not they're always they'd never want buggy things but at some point they're going to be like all right guys this week we're just going to hard look at these dungeons and just do another round of tuning and they just haven't been doing that for the last two weeks you know they don't have like a million employees they could be doing a lot of other things but yeah it definitely I, maybe it just it seems like this for me you guys might be used to this i don't do a lot of mythic plus usually i've been doing a ton uh this season uh i've just been having a lot of fun playing the game uh so for me, it's like, what is going on? You know, maybe maybe it's like raider privilege. Like whenever we're in the raid and there's an raider issue, privilege, like oh, or, or like race to world first privilege, because like whenever yeah, we run yeah. into a problem, Blizzard's like fucking wee you, wee you. The fucking alarms are going off. They're like yeah. whipping up the whole team to fix it. You know, and like I'm like doing the plus, and it's just like this this shit is so obviously bad. Like the, the well, not the whole. By the way, the, the dungeon set's great. There's a lot of really good things with the plus, but like you know, there's there's so many clear and obvious flaws. Uh, that should be changed or fixed, and they're just not doing it. So who knows? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but they've actually been making way more changes this expansion than like probably all three of the previous expansions combined for M Plus. Why is like, that they, bad news? They literally... That's great news. Well, I mean, I mean yeah, but it still just, feels like they're say, not, like, like if you think like this, this is if this is them yeah, if you think this is this bad, is them hands on, right? Is what Dorky's saying? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, f I wonder if, like, part of it is them feeling like it's not a problem in 20s. Maybe that's why they consider, like, 
there being no changes needed. Like people are doing 20s just fine. People are like not having these one shot issues or certain losses say, being like absolutely terrible. Bolstering mm -hmm. flowers were a problem in my 20s last week. That was uh, well, I constructed some raid bosses in those dungeons despite <laughs> trying not to. So, so I have two issues with that. Number one, we know and we have played with some of the developers and they've done more like 25s, 26s, 27s up, right? We've played those keys with them. So like they, the whole like, oh, well, it doesn't matter in 20s. Yes, that's that's who they are probably primarily designing for. And there is probably some level of, oh, if I'm a, if I'm a <clears throat> dungeon designer and someone links me a clip of some super high scaled key having some crazy like one shot thing, they're probably like, yeah, in an infinitely scaling game mode, that is actually going to happen. And that's like, okay, I guess. Like, and some things are like that, you know, not everything that's going to one shot you like it, it's, it's a accepted thing. Once you go above a uh, 27, 28 Tyran that like, there's a mechanic on a boss that will literally one shot every single one of your characters every time, if you do not have something for it. And that's something you outplay. It is not bullshit. It's something you outplay. But then like, you know, if that happens every 30 seconds, every 45 seconds, maybe you can play it. If that happens every 10 seconds, maybe that's not okay. Right. Uh, maybe if that happens on a 25 on this key and a 28 on every other key, maybe that's not okay, right? So I think it's about, like, identifying the specific thing that is bad. And the only counter I would have to that is, oh, this isn't a problem in 20s. Pretty much everything that becomes overscaled too quickly and becomes, I would say, whatever you would consider bullshit in a higher key. Which I don't think there's, by the way, too many of those things right now. Uh, but there are a few. And whenever that happens, if you were to nerf it, it's not like people in 20s would be like, man... Man, I really wish when soul thorns were a little bit harder on the tree boss and Waycrest. Like, they would just never say that, right? Like, they, they usually proportionally scale up in difficulty at those levels, too. So, uh, I, I just think they should be more proactive with it. That's my whole, uh, my whole get up. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's just like, I, I wonder why they don't make these changes. But also, on another note, like, it was, it was kind of surprising how many people were playing last week. So I was kind of just like snooping through LFG and kind of just yeah. like watching other people stream. And wow, there were actually still a lot of people playing. I'm like, man, it's bolstering. It's got to be real bad. Everyone's just like doing the eight keys and then logging off, playing something else. But so surprisingly, have, they, they maintain a lot of people playing. We have the graph as well of the player retention updated now for that fifth week of the of the season, which uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a little drop off compared to week four, which actually was a gain from week three. Um, but it's not a, not a huge drop off, not the kind of like compared to me, how much less fun the bolstering week feels than the other weeks. Uh, I'm surprised by how little drop off there was. Um, I do think that you can explain some of that with just the fact that M plus is still rewarding to play for like almost all players for their first eight runs each week, every week for the next month or two, right? Like you're, you still have a lot of good stuff you can do with your aspects crest, your worms crest, whatever level key you're doing. The upgrade system has now been moved to a place where you feel like, oh, yeah, I should do some keys because that's going to be good for my character, which wasn't really true last season, right? Last season, you can see the the keys dropping off much more sharply, much more quickly, I think, because the people people didn't feel like an incentive to go and do them because there wasn't as many upgrades that they could get out of them after those first few weeks of the season. I don't know. I'm not sure how many players, though, had that being true last season uh, as well because the upgrade system maybe was still good for... I mean, it looks like it's it looks like it's doing better this season. Uh, maybe that's the upgrade system. Maybe it's the dungeon pool is more fun. Well, maybe it's the classes are more fun. Maybe it's the twenties are easier. There's a lot of different factors. It could be. There's so many. Everything you just said is true. Like the twenties yeah. being easier is huge. We learned that early. The the whole like what I don't know which one which week it is here because like season two was really weird because it also had like the Diablo thing. Like that was certainly a huge impact. Um, and then is it, it was right around this point where you're like, oh. Well, a lot of these runs that you see here were in were getting gear and then and like farming upgrades in some way. And then at very close after that, that stopped being the case this time, at least like just my personal I, I log in every Tuesday and I'm like, I know how I'm getting more powerful. And that feels awesome. And it's not like too little of an amount. It's not too big of an amount. But like you still feel that character progression every week that was gone in season two. Right. Um, it seems universally the dungeons seem better which which week is this by the way the uh, uh the flatline week what is that is that a fortified week let me pull up the affixes that again. was tyrannical did it, right did it go tyrannical fortified tyrannical or was the first week fortified uh what was week five week five was fortified bolstering right so week four was tyrannical 
Wow. Is that so, accurate? so that's the thing that maybe is the most surprising to me is you get like this first fortified week, you get tyrannical. They're like kind of going down. You know, people are playing the patch. They're dropping off, whatever. What, what do you guys think was the cause of 2.3 million? I guess it is right here. And then it actually goes up to almost 2.4 like a flat line that didn't happen in any other season. Why, why in this week? So it went from, it looks like it went from fortified volcanic spiteful to tyrannical storming raging. So the other affixes were maybe ones that were seen as uh, easier. Maybe, maybe that's it. Although maybe, it, I don't know. I mean, I think the thing as well about tyrannical and fortified is that if you're doing twenties this season, I think tyrannical is more annoying than fortified was. And I don't think that was true in previous seasons. I think in previous seasons, 20s, it felt about the same. I think in previous seasons, 26s and higher, right? Like high key pushing, you kind of always hated Tyrannical more if you were a high key pusher. But if you were a 20 doer, you would like Fortified, or you like Tyrannical about as much or more than Fortified pretty often. Yeah. And then if you were a 15 doer or a 10 doer, you think Tyrannical is way better than Fortified usually. Like in my experience, the people playing those keys love Tyrannical and, and very much dislike Fortified. Fortified is like much more random deaths on the group. More of the dungeon is harder. And the Tyrannical bosses just aren't tuned to be that hard around what player characters can do at those levels that it doesn't feel bad. You're not hitting like four minute fights. So I think the thing that's changed this season is that has shifted down one on the scale. So Tyrannical... Now, instead of being like neutral in 20s, Tyrannical feels worse in 20s. And instead of feeling better in 15s, it feels neutral in 15s. I think mm. it still feels better in plus 10s, though, and stuff. And most keys done are still in that 2 to 10 range, right? That 2 to 14 range rather than the 15s and up, where I think this season Tyrannical really does start to feel pretty bad pretty early. Yeah, yeah and I think a large reason for that, too, is because in a lot of these dungeons, you can have 20 deaths. You can just keep wiping to trash pack. But you'll still, you'll still time the key at the end in the 20. But on Tyrannical Weeks, you just can't get through some of these walls sometimes. Like, it doesn't matter how many deaths you have. If you just, like, say you can't get through the Council Boss in Everbloom, then you're kind of just boned, right? Like, there's no amount of brute forcing it the same way you can with Fortified. Is it also... Yeah. Very true. I was going to say for this number, some people in chat seem to be mentioning that it is like a holiday. I, I don't know enough about how holidays increase or decrease. The, I would guess it goes up on a holiday because like more people are just kind of casually blasting some keys. Which one of these weeks was holiday one, then? Right? Was that was that it week four? Season one. What week? What holiday even was that? Was that? I mean, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving I guess. Right. Oh, Thanksgiving would have been week two, right? Because... Yeah, I yeah, don't think it was, week it was two, really right? a whole, yeah, You don't... guys did Thanksgiving in the race, which is week two. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I you can see it a little bit with season one, maybe, right? Because season one, week two is Christmas. Yeah. People are saying it lined up with season of Discovery. When was season of Discovery? That's a good point. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. Season 20-something. Was Wasn't it November? It would have been like week three. If it... So that means that this like tyrannical week that... Mm. was the only one in this entire expansion where the runs went up after one week was the week after season of discovery came that out is so, so maybe, weird maybe week three is the week <clears throat> that season of discovery comes out and so it but it doesn't even look like it's dropping precipitously right it's going down by the same slope as week one to week two was so yeah i, I mean bizarre oh um, someone mentioned something I, they said it, it's the heroic box from the weekly was that week that is a good point. Yeah, because you could do four keys and get a get a heroic box. I'm sure that actually spikes. Oh, it has to quite a bit. Yeah. It has to, but also that must have happened in all of these other two lines too. Maybe but... that explains week three of season one it jumping up. Yeah, yeah, maybe. maybe. Maybe that explains week two of season two not dropping off as much. I don't. Know. Although I guess I don't remember. I don't remember when the hero when the M plus week was on any of these seasons. So I have yeah. no idea. I, I guess the point is there's a lot of factors here, so we can't just point at any week and be like, the affixes here are the problem. But what we can do is we can be like, the affixes are clearly never enough of a problem to take a week from like 100% play rate down to zero or anything like that. Like at worst, bad affixes take off a couple of percent of players or something like that, despite them feeling much worse for us who play the game a lot, right? And who play it at the high keys. Yeah, I also, I think there's one really significant thing here, and that is... 
looking at season one, season two, and season three on a line, you can say that in week five of each season, the third season had the most players. I I wonder if any of the previous expansions have had a number like that, because that uh, they, it just makes sense that people play the expansion in any game like this where Actually, there I are, think BFA season four that was a big one. I I see the thing is is that sounds like that would be the case for me. I wonder if that's even true though, because so many people played BFA season four. But you'd be surprised if you look at these charts from other expansions, how many more players are there at the beginning of uh, the beginning of games. So I don't know. Well, so season four of VFA was a little bit unique. It was during COVID, which like, you know, a lot of people were playing the game. And it was also when awesome. uh, people were spamming key. Well, yeah, awesome. yeah, it was awesome also key, insanely it was also, better than the first season. Yeah, right. But it was also what a lot of people were spamming keys to do or to get corruption gear. Yeah, so I would I would I, I, I would think... be interested to see the thing. But the thing is, is there's none of that this yeah. time. There's no COVID. There's no there's no like yeah, increased incentive. Natty. Really, well, it's not all natty. I think like the big reason that season three started so much ahead of season two, which would never be the case Blizzcon. in a normal season, was just BlizzCon like gave massive hype yeah. to it. So like clearly that was part of it. But the thing is, is it's retaining way better than season one did, which is again just very surprising. So uh shout out Blizzard, but also tune the dungeons a little more. We can probably move on but <laughs> yeah. uh i agree with the with both those points all right uh do we want to talk about mdi and awc because that seems uh tied in with m plus right oh, yeah, and we got the yeah, the sure. announcement there which i initially didn't put i never put the put mdi because i never remember what i'm allowed to talk about or not with these sorts of things so um mm, so but yeah do. i see there there is a public announcement so there is an mdi coming soon that's good love that uh so i'll start yep. this off hot they announced they had said they were doing MDI, TGP, MDI, this expansion. Uh, so we kind of knew Season 3 was going to be an MDI. That was that was on the schedule. I was kind of hoping for an Audible, uh, honestly. I was hoping for... Hey, you know what? The, the TGP... like, Or at least, like... I, I Okay, you can do the MDI. That's fine. I just think not having a TGP in a season is a crime. It's it's just too good to, to not do. And I think it's just a vastly superior product. And I can explain why, but I just kind of want to hear what you guys think about it. Holy, actually true. I, I mean, MDI, like, I really don't know how many people are going to be competing in MDI. And, well, so, normally what sucks about MDI is the amount of cups and the matches between, like, the, the first seed team and the bottom seed team is generally not interesting to watch. But one nice thing about this, AW, or this MDI, at least, is it's actually going to be a shorter season. There's only going to be, what is it, two cups, I believe? Yeah, that's a huge, two good cups. change. Huge change. Yeah. 18 total teams, I believe. And there's less of a disparity, and it's going to be quicker going into the global finals instead of just, like, grinding through all these cups until you finally get to the good teams, good good matches. Yeah. I don't know how much Dratnos can even comment on this because, like, I I'm just going to say what I... Okay. The I can. Okay. Yeah. Those cups... Those Saturdays in the MDI with the three cups where it was mainly lower bracket from like 12th through 24th ranked, MDI, that was that was brutal. I mean, absolute brutal. Sorry, you look like you want to chime in. No, no, it's it's good. I You are, of course, entitled to your opinion. And you should understand that my opinion here should be taken with a big grain of salt. That being said, I, I, I actually think that the like seed 13 versus seed 16 games are often very fun to watch and cast. The ones that I struggle with more are seed 16 versus seed one. Those games are ones where unless there's like some kind of upset, it, it uh, often gets very one-sided yeah. very quickly, um, which also is something that I think both of those types of games we're going to see less of, obviously with the, with only 16 teams in instead of 24. So I think this is a, uh, a good format. I think so. The reason that they're shrinking it down as well, healing stats had on, on Twitter as well was uh it's because they're running three seasons this year instead of two in previous years as well. So it's not just like getting cut down, right? They're they're condensing it a little bit because they need to fit in another whole season into the year, which oh, it presumably is the war within season. Yeah, I th I'll link that in the um. Well, no, I'll link I that saw. In the talking points. I yeah, I saw him saying that, but I thought that was in regards to the prize pool. Yeah, I guess I I assume that's also true for, and this is me assuming. This is not me asserting this or in, in any way or anything, but I assume that's also true for the condensing of the schedule as well, right? Uh, if you're trying to fit 
the same number of weekends into the year, but over three yeah. events instead of uh, instead of two. Well, I think that would make sense. I I actually okay. So I had no idea that the uh, uh, abbreviated schedule for this was because of that. I don't. I, I actually don't know if that's. I, I'm just assuming that's true. Oh, okay. That, because that makes sense. I think me. it's just a good choice. Yeah. I think yeah. so. So are you? So we are getting objectively like one less weekend of MDI watching this season than we did previously. I think it's two fewer because I think we're, we're not getting Group C and we're not getting a last stand. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, then maybe that's a little interesting. But I think the average quality of what you are going to be watching will be significantly higher than the last chance was pretty cool. But like yeah. the the whole like having group A and B instead of A B and C when you that having the C with how many realistic competitors there are in the MBI dilutes the average quality of competitor by a lot and it makes much more total games interesting so the time that you tune in should be much higher quality and I I think that as a general concept is really good. Yeah, I I personally am also a big TGP fan and I will say the other format I am a fan of is the Last Stand which is basically just TGP but instead of key level go up, you're trying to do the key faster at a low level. Yeah. And I think that's better than the head-to-head -head matches personally. But so I'm a little bit sad to see the last stand here go. Uh, and I agree with you. Like, I think in general, if I had to choose between MDI and TGP, I would I would do mostly TGPs and, and not very many MDIs. Um, and I think it is sad to see it gone for this season and put in season four instead. But I do still think that this MDI has a lot of, good improvements compared to previous MDIs as well, which is, is good with the format. So and I do like MDI as well. I mean, before there was a TGP, I thought MDI was the, the coolest thing ever. So I do still think it's very good. What do you, Dorky, what is your feelings on MDI versus TGP real quick? Because I, I want to give mine, but I just want to make sure that you've given yours first. So as a player, I would say MDI has like the higher highs. When you're going up against a really good team and like you know you only have one shot at this there's like no rush that's like similar to that in any of m plus it has actually been a, an extremely fun experience in terms of practice i would say mdi is a little bit more monotonous and it's a little bit more soul crushing for lack of a better word mm. but i would say like overall i prefer tgp but mdi is also fun like TGP is just much more similar to live keys. Your experience transfers over easily, and it's like what you normally are. It's what you already normally do. Whereas TGP, whereas MDI is something completely different. It's like a completely different beast. You're just like trying to figure out how to do these crazy pulls. And while like I still enjoy that very much, like I love doing big pulls, I do prefer TGP. Okay, so that's like. Okay, so you're coming in from the player perspective, which I think is interesting. I, I, I've i never done, I've only done MDIs. I've never done TGPs, and I can definitely hit you with the, the soul-crushing practice of, like, trying to do one pull for, like, six hours, and that just, like, occupying, because you know it's possible, and it's, like, all that stuff. But I think I'm going to come at this entirely from the viewer perspective. I think MDI has just as high of highs as TGP. They just happen a lot less frequently. So, for example, if you guys watched uh, Echo versus Mandatory, I think, in the last... Was it Season 1? Yeah, it was Season 1. It was because I remember watching Halls of Valor. That was as good... That might have actually been better in a short form than everything I saw in the TGP this year. That was unbelievably hype. The problem is it happens once. And the upper finals, the lower finals, and the grand finals of pretty much every cup and in the grand finals are like top tier wow watching like just very 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 good the problem is it's like 20 to 15 to 10 percent of like what you're watching and it's a lot of filler why i think the tgp is better not only does it um you know is it more relatable to the content that people are actually doing like there's a lot of, there's a big mythic plus category in the wow section of people who just watch Mythic plus like it's just more relatable to that than than mdi is and always has been uh, but the issue is, is you want to watch the best teams as a viewer. You want to watch the best teams play against each other. You want to watch Echo and like Echo has won these tournaments. Mandatory has been so good. Like you felt like Mandatory could win any map they were in versus Echo. And that's really hard to get when you're playing them. In the TGP, you are watching the best teams play against each other for all 15 hours of the weekend. And in the MDI, you are watching the best teams play against each other for like one or two hours of the 15 hours of the weekend. And I think that is the prime thing. There are talking points and interesting things happening between the best people playing each other the whole time 
versus the MDI, you know, you see a wipe and it's like a foregone conclusion. You know this team's going to win this map. I can AFK for the next 15 minutes. And then TGP, they're starting a new key. Maybe they're swapping dungeons. Maybe they're doing... Like, everything kind of has a narrative to it. And it's just just a far better product, in my opinion. And, and I, know, I don't think losing the MDI is the way it has to go. Um, but man, I just think they're ever not being a TGP is wrong, for sure. Dude, yeah, when you brought the point of like when one team wiping and then it's like all right just AFK 15 minutes that part is the worst as a viewer what do you just watch a team wipe and it's like oh well i mean it's pretty much over right like there's no comeback mechanics there, there's there's no there's no reason to stay invested in it when when one team wipes early on especially when it's like a very big scary pull i will say if they somehow added a comeback mechanic like, maybe you can drop an offensive on the other team, you know, shoot them with a red turtle shell. That'd be sick. Dreadles, you got to bring this up. You got to spice up MDI. Dude, I, How I'm cool that be? Dude, imagine if you're just, like, running two pre-holds at each other and you can just fire the cannons at the other team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. just, like, shoot a turtle shell at Zalia, get them stunned for five seconds, and then cause yeah. a wipe. Oh, that'd be so sick. I, I think that would probably be hellish to be one of the players involved in that, but I... I love, uh, you know, causing suffering for it. So that that does have fun. <laughs> I do think the, yeah, it's a good point though, Max, that the, like the level of key thing is definitely part of it. But I do think the last stand format works well at the low key level, the speed run type, because it also has that TGP thing where if you wipe, you go again, instead of if you wipe, you lose, right? Yeah. So MDI, mix. a lot of the time you're watching, you're watching a, a series that moves pretty quickly to like 95-5 in favor of the team that's ahead. And as long as they just don't wipe, they're going to win, right? Because the other team already wiped. And they know that too. The good yeah. teams will will either have someone watching or one of them will have it on their monitor. And it's delayed, but like the dungeons are long enough to where they know. So like you can actually yeah. even see if you have done it before. You can see them start changing decisions uh, later because they know they're ahead kind of stuff. Whereas TGP has some very sneaky stuff going on with the format that means it always looks close at the end of the last day, even if it's not actually that close. Because even if I'm two points ahead of you, which is really hard, like if the best team is two points ahead of the second best team, they've done like two really, really hard high keys. Up until an hour before the end of the 15-hour event, there's still a path for the other team to catch back up, right? Which is time those two keys and have better tie breaks, right? And so up until the very end of the of the last day, even if there's a couple of points that one team is in the lead and they're going to end up winning by quite a lot objectively, that path is still open for the other team to win up until then. So uh, even in the less close TGPs we've had, it looks close and it's fun to watch up until maybe the last hour at the worst. And often it goes into the overtime. Often when we reach the, the overtime at the end of the last day, there is two teams that could still win where it's like, if Echo time their key, they win no matter what. If the other team times their key and Echo depletes, then they win instead, right? And like yeah. that is often this, this, the game state that we're in going into overtime. So I think it, it is a format that, unlike MDI, if there's two teams that are pretty good and kind of close, they'll almost always go to overtime or, or get close to it in TGP, whereas there, it'll often be a blowout in one way or another in any given map in an MDI. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I think uh, either way, happy to see it come back. It's also like a bit a bit from now, but definitely will be super hype when it gets there. I, I want to know if you guys want to take a look at the uh, the roadmap that was just Ooh, recently yeah. announced. So we got this at the end of last. Uh, we got this is the second one ever. We got one at the end of 2022. And it was, here's how much content you're getting. And we were kind of going crazy. Like this is, wow, this is, an expansion has never looked like this. There's just like way more content in total being released. I think they kind of slowed down a little bit in season two, but pretty much stuck to exactly what they said. But I think there's one, one big, uh, actually I can maybe pull it up on my stream. Does anyone have the picture of the roadmap in the, uh, in the. Yeah, put Discord? it in talking points now. Sweet. Yeah. Go. They have a. Uh, there is a big thing, which is when we were at BlizzCon, we were kind of under the assumption that the expansion was going to be coming. I don't know, like, oh, they're going to do these eighteen-month expansions in the World Soul Saga. But God, it sounds so corny calling it that. The but you know they're gonna but like we're gonna have to take this entire raid tier off and a whole whole entire year to prepare for it. And then they released this pick, and that seems to not entirely be the case. It seems that. We're going to be getting this, what, it looks like August, maybe September release instead of like winter. 
which is kind of uh kind of i mean i feel like not enough people unless i'm reading this wrong i feel like not enough people are talking about that it's like just they just said something else at blizzcon and now it's coming faster yeah a lot of people were speculating speculating late summer yeah it's weird because they put up a slide that says fall 2024 and then a lot of people were like no i feel like it's gonna be in summer it's gotta be sooner right and everybody's like you have no basis for that right belief but then the roadmap comes out and it's it's crept into late summer so uh it's a weird spot of like the players and the devs kind of being of the same mind on yeah the expansion actually should be a little bit sooner than they announced which yeah i mean it's cool i'm I, the sooner the better for me i mean for sure i mean when i i was thinking like one year without a new raid that's why i was so dobby about what our season four is going to be is you know this expansion it made sense for there to be a fourth raid like Right. In the in Shadowlands, like everything was delayed, like totally makes sense, whatever. Like the faded only makes sense as like a couple month thing uh before the new expansion. That's looks like it's gonna be pretty much what it is. And then we can get into faded uh, a little bit because we kind of are now getting an idea of what that should be. Uh I was hoping for a little bit more, but you know, we can get into that. Uh but at least it won't be like a full thing. So at least it makes a little bit more sense. There's not a fourth raid now. I'm like less upset about that, because like at least in summer we'll be having the new expansion and everything. And it looks like we're going to be getting alpha really soon, right? Like like within the next... Like a month or like something? Like month yeah. and a half, maybe. Something like that for alpha, which is obviously... That's that's my favorite time of the year. That's like... And I eat that up. I love, I love all the news and stuff that comes out about the game. It's like constant talking points all week. What do you guys think about this? There's yeah. a whole lot of... I actually... I'm very curious to know like what all these are. Like I'm looking at through this right now, reclamation of Gilneas, Azerothian archives, follower dungeons. The follower whole, dungeons uh, are sick. Time running those, pandemonium. Those are gonna get a lot of people into the game. What That's, is follower dungeons? What, what is, is that? So you can queue up with you by yourself or up to up to four people, and it will just fill the remaining spots with NPCs and oh, you can do that? a you do a normal dungeon with them. Um so you can do one oh, player wow. and four NPCs and do a normal dungeon, which is going to be i think that's going to be huge no, for getting huge. people into dungeons like that it's i think it's only normal difficulty uh which is fine but Dude, I, I need that for m plus but yeah <laughs> high mythic I plus yeah but i just want I, that a would be sweet. healer that'd be great yeah just yeah like, not, not no, never have, have to play with an actual healer again oh man that'd be so good <laughs> yeah uh but i think that's going to be huge for getting people into dungeons and also it's going to be nice like do you remember when there was that spark quest that sent you into halls of infusion or whatever and you had to do that by yourself now you can do it with four npcs so that's nice. Don't I mean, to, yeah, that, that to wrangle a group together. Be probably fun to do for content. I think for us, honestly, I think seeing what the followers do in some scenarios can be pretty funny. And then also, just for the majority of people who play this game, this is going to be a huge thing. I think other games have things similar to this where you can do like, you know, basically story mode level content with NPCs, but like you don't require playing with other people. People eat that up. So, yeah, because you know it's a, it's an MMO, right? Obviously, a lot of stuff should involve other players, but I do think having an accessible version that you can play by yourself. Like there are people that just like to play MMOs by themselves and uh, supporting that a little bit more, I think is, is just a good thing. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to see that one. I think that's going to expand the, the game. Uh, and I'm sure there will be a lot of people doing M plus in three years time that wouldn't be if they, ha if there hadn't been follower dungeons to get them into dungeons in the first place. Uh, two more it things that are kind of new. What is this? What is this pirate flag 10.2.6 thing? Yeah, that's a that is a big mystery. They've got something cooking here that they think is cool enough to not tell us what it is because obviously if it was like something really small, I think they would probably just you know like this is generating hype that it's a surprise. So hopefully it's Holy, cool. I'm so hype. Yeah, I, pirates are sweet. I just I I've been thinking about it so much. Like it's 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 a point six. So it's not a point seven like we've got in the rest of the expansion. It's its own specific thing. It, I, I I can't even begin like everything I have is just a long shot like I don't get it it's just we're just gonna have to wait and see which is I mean it'll actually well if we're being realistic here it'll probably just get data mined at some point <laughs> but but uh, yeah. uh, at least until then and then the other thing what the hell is time running not just time running pandemonium is being misspelled there to put panda as emphasized because I think pandemonium normally has an e in it hang on yeah normally does, there's a there's an oh, E dude. after the A, so, they, so they've got a... They, they, I think it's... There's a speculation post on Wowhead, but 
what if this is like mop challenge mode time walking, mm. right? And so it's running because it's challenge it's, mode it's, and you have it's to do it fast. harder. Yeah, time running yeah. challenge. You have to do it fast. Pandemonium because that's when the first challenge modes were. There were some in mop and wad. But like, why call it something like that if it's just like, why wouldn't it be bringing back challenge modes? Why why go through the effort of calling it this like cryptic time running thing? Like, if you could just make it challenge, I don't know. Like, I, I, they're putting some whimsy into the roadmap. Probably something temporary too. Also, they're due for the next time walking raid, which I think is Mop. So that'll probably be when that comes out as well. Then the new, like probably time walking Throne of Thunder or something. Um, oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah, but oh. Okay, well then maybe there's some other tag. I mean, I've been asking for this for a while. I actually wanted them to do this for like season four, uh, season four instead of faded. Like instead of bringing back some of the current dungeons, like or raids, bringing back in like a Nighthold, a Blackrock Foundry, a tomb, a uh, a tomb, a Throne of Thunder, a Siege of Orgrimmar, and like actually like tune it up to be like current mythic levels of difficulty. And like going through and now no longer rotating like you're progressing one raid but it's like you know maybe like a new touch of paint a little bit maybe maybe time running could be that not even just challenge modes but it also could be if they're around the level of doing time walking for throne i wonder if they would make it a little bit harder you know because that was the most recent raid to not have a mythic difficulty is throne of thunder right so correct you know that would be the easiest one to retrofit okay so you're talking about Faded as well, which they're not using the word Faded at all, but Season 4 says Dragonflight Raids Revisited, which does make us think it's probably the Dragonflight Raids, but what if it starts off with just the three Dragonflight Raids, and then in 2.7, they add the Mists Raids as well into the Faded rotation, and they're, like, refurbished, and that keeps it fresh, and, and we get to do Throne of I mean, Thunder that would again. be insanely good, but I, I just... Yeah. I, I, that, that sounds very ambitious, but yeah. The, this is a cook, yeah. Yeah, it's a cook. Yeah, I, I mean, I would definitely yeah. be down, but... Yeah, the, the problem I've always had with time walking stuff is they never end up feeling rewarding enough and feeling like, you know, actual content. And I don't know how much time they would actually really put into bringing back old stuff. Because... We've had a lot of time walking stuff in the past, and there was actually wasn't there that one time where they had like time walking M plus Legion dungeons. Yeah. That was kind of cool for a little bit, but like it kind of just like fell off. That's what I think this is. Not enough. I I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping there's like more to it, you know. Yeah, maybe Need maybe, more, but like lasting power. I I think that is. So when did they come out with the time walking Legion and Myth plus, Mythic Plus stuff? Was that was it like end of Shadowlands ish? I think it was somewhere. early Shadowlands or late BFA. I think it was early Shadowlands though, because they pretty quickly. We're like, actually, the way we're going to do this is the rotating dungeons thing. And so we're we're stopping the time walking M plus experiment um, and doing doing returning dungeons instead. When did they bring and like then they brought back the mage tower as well to be done? It, it was whenever they brought back Legion time walking. Yeah, which I think was like se late yeah. season one. I think it was I think it was later in Shadowlands than what you're saying. I think, yeah, I think it was Maybe season two. It can't have been by season three, though, because that was when they were doing we're planning the season four returning dungeon thing instead. Yeah, I think it. I think it was after Sanctum of Domination. So Maybe, it was yeah. like, which was roughly about how long it took to do this because that expansion was like delayed, right? Like everything was pushed back. So like maybe this is just an idea they have mid expansion. And then this time they're like, okay, we brought back this mage tower thing. You can get these old previously unobtainable rewards. Uh, and now you can get these like new rewards, whatever. Maybe they're just doing that with mob challenge modes. Like maybe they'll just be like recolors of the old, uh, like really, really sought after uh challenge mode sets i'd be interested to see if they actually bring back the challenge mode sets right they've been those have been unobtainable and very sought after and i know there's be sick they've been talking they've been bringing back unobtainable previously unobtainable things right it via like drops and uh the whatever the trading post thing is like maybe i could definitely see it being like a two to three week or one month long miss challenge modes re-released and like retuned for everyone to do which i i think challenge mode content we've talked about this on a previous podcast i think like brawlers guild th those kind of things challenge modes those are those are universally well liked like they usually don't miss with stuff like that i, I just wish they did more of it in general and certainly bringing back successful versions of it like the mage tower are awesome so i'm i'm all for it if they do that yeah i've actually been hearing more comments like that too and people have just been coming back and being like man I kind of wish there were more solo content where I could just like log in and have something to do when my friends are not on. Otherwise, you kind of just logged out of the game. I do have one thought about missed challenge modes, though. 
Uh, do you guys think they make them harder? This is something that not a lot of people know, but like people are way better at the game. Like, like if people were doing miss challenge modes were like this really hard, like you either bought a carry or like you spent so much time, bro. If current, if the exact same content was released for like current day, you would just at everyone that you know would breeze through. It would be a joke. Uh, so Wasn't they, that partially because of vengeance mechanic, or I, I didn't really play too much challenge modes? Well, I mean, yeah, your tank had like the biggest impact on them because the best tanks were like owning on damage and never dying, and you know, just kind of same thing as now, but probably more. Uh, but not really. Like you could, you know, they, they were they were not hard. They were not hard. You could four man them with someone AFK, right? Uh, yeah, that's kind so, of lame. So yeah, so if you were good, but a lot of people still struggle because people are just not good, at, not as good at the game. Uh, they would have to make them significantly harder. And then ba that line that they would have to find between this is too hard for the casual play, like like the Mage Tower line, right, of challenging enough to make you really, really care about the thing you've achieved versus not hard enough to alienate a lot of people. That line is really hard to get. And I, I, wonder, yeah. I wonder what they do with that. I okay, also so... wonder, Jade Serpent, are they going to go back and change Redo that back it. to the challenge yeah. mode version or is it going to just be an outlier and like wise mari yeah yeah <laughs> what are we doing there good okay, question so if it was let's let's say the difficulty is a plus 20 what item level would you be set to for it to be a challenge mode thing like let's say it's scaled to plus 20 and then what item level should Ooh. you be yeah and like current to? current patch well what they did back then 50 maybe i don't yeah, even know you're, think, I think. you're thinking plus 20 what they would do is they would set it to the not even mythic version the like normal or heroic version of it but your eye level would be like unbelievably low like what you had when you were leveling or way below that uh that's what it was in in mist but now that there's like mythic zeros it'd probably be mythic zero but you just have no gear just so it had like all the mythic mechanics probably I, yeah, it's just easier for us to have like 20 as a reference since we know that what it's like. Yeah. So he, here's what I would do if I was making it. I would do, I would, I wouldn't set such a low eye level on the scaling just because I feel like people would feel weak. So I would set it to like normal raid eye level, something like that, that you get scaled to. And that way it still preserves the thing where it's like you, you're not trying to out gear it. And I think I would actually have it be like plus 10 keys or something, but then you're still speed running them and, and, you know, it's a question of like, can you three chest to plus 10 or something like that uh, to get the rewards, which obviously is like not super duper hard, but uh, is something that I think would be a fun challenge for a lot of people. And and then obviously like you could have like infinite, you know, speed running against that to try and be the fastest on your server or whatever, be the fastest in the world on a leaderboard or something. But I feel like that would be the rough tuning I, I would suggest if they wanted to get the spirit of it again. I don't think you want to go back to the like leveling gear, doing an M0 oh, or for doing sure. a heroic dungeon. I think that would just not feel right. And the gear farming, like there's certain trinkets that scale down that are just like way better, even from previous yeah. raids and stuff. So I, I did, someone mentioned in chat and I pulled it up. Wowhead made that like speculation post, you know, time running pandemonium. Could it be this time running return of challenge modes? Holly Longdale responded, uh, EP of wow. Uh, could it be even better than that? Could be like a, you know, uh, an, an, an intern just tweeting and creating buzz on social media or whatever. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I like, I don't know exactly what that means. Like, Oh, it's even cooler than challenge modes. I don't know if that really matters. I will say though, I think, man, talk about content. I can you imagine if like just straight up, if they just release challenge modes, like it is uh, a plus 20 of the key and you just do it as fast as possible. And there's a leaderboard on wow's website. That would be, unbelievably hype i think people would spend all all the top players would spend their time on that for a while like that would be so fun yeah i mean i wholeheartedly agree this this is a great way to add some content and i think that during the faded season is the best time to do some of this because that's going to be a long season uh for you know high-end players to not have much to do although it's a new m plus season as well which um that'll hopefully be fun i, I i'm hoping they do all 10 dragonflight dungeons in that season because i haven't I felt like we haven't had enough time with like Avatar oh good Academy. good point I, I hadn't yeah. even thought about that so yeah they announced season four it looks like you're getting a full new mythic plus season just like usual um my question is okay so we can talk about the the raid stuff I, I actually that's probably just a, a better off for another another episode I think what do you guys want to see in a season four mythic plus last time 
what they did in the faded season in Shadowlands was they actually did a lot of experimenting. In fact, a lot of which I think led to the current upgrade system. I don't think the current upgrade system exists without them messing around with the upgrade systems in uh, that season, which I think is huge. I think the current upgrade system is actually fantastic. Uh, what kind of stuff would you guys like to see? Like, I was thinking about this on my stream yesterday. Would If there's not a better time to experiment with what maybe affixes should look like in Mythic Plus, maybe talk about the return of seasonals, maybe 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 cook up, you know, like what maybe no affixes look like, maybe maybe a solo queue variant of Mythic Plus. Like, th this is the time to experiment. They were successful at experimenting before. What would you guys want to see them experiment with in Season 4 if they choose to do that? I would say all of that, right? Like, solo queue, that'd be great experiments. Changing affixes, maybe like try out positive affixes. Seasonal affixes, of course. Another really interesting one is like, what if they shrunk all M plus timers down to to like you know, almost Ooh. speed running levels? Like, what if they just made dungeons for a season twenty minutes, anywhere between like, down to as low as fifteen minutes, like fifteen to twenty five minutes? What if it was? You get the key up to a plus 20, and it's scaling the health and damage of the mobs. And then over plus 20, it's just taking time off the timer instead as the key goes up above that. Mm, that would be interesting. I love I mean, that's kind of the idea. Yeah, I mean, that. this has been talked about a million times. This is yeah. JB's, like, magnum opus. Yeah, this is, he's, he, he, exactly. Yeah. This, is, this is not original, an original me idea. This is the one I've seen floating around. Uh, JB so. could instantly die, and he would die happy if something like this existed. Like, he would, yeah. So, so that is a... Uh... I think really cool. I I wonder what they're going to do with Dungeon Pool. You kind of mentioned this. like in previous. In... I think it's got to be the 10 Dragon Flights, right? Like, I mean, there's no way that they design Algathar Academy, put all the work into it, and it's an M-plus dungeon for, like, less once. than six months. Yeah. And, you know, it's of the two years the expansion is out. So I feel like it's got to be it's got to be eight or 10 Dragon Flight dungeons, right? I don't know. Maybe not. I hope it is. That'd probably be, like, a lucky case. I hope it is. The only thing I'm thinking of is we're thinking of like, oh, we only did this for six months and we stopped. I bet Blizzard is like the majority of our players interacted with Algathar the entire expansion because they Maybe. do it on normal and heroic and shit. Uh, but, you know, I still, you know, obviously it's so unrelatable. Um, but yeah, I mean, they would kind of have to do that. It was it was the opposite in Shadowlands. Like Shadowlands, it was like, oh, let's get weird in season four. But it's like, well, we've been weird the whole time. So maybe we bring it back to bring it back to just the dragon. I mean, I, I think a full season of Dragonflight Dungeons would low key go hard. I think that would yeah. be like really good. Yeah, There's a lot of good dungeons in there. I mean, I think this season's pool is good too, and I think they could pick other good dungeons to do in season four if they wanted to. I just. I feel like I haven't had enough of like Algathar in particular and a few of the other. I mean, maybe not Al Algathar's timer was always a little. I love Algathar. Little tight, but I, I love liked the Algathar. Dungeon, yeah. um, if they don't do that, then I hope instead they're willing to bring back the Dragonflight dungeon sooner than otherwise. Because their rationale for like, we didn't want to bring back, uh, you know, Shadowlands dungeons this time around is we could, we just had them for a bunch of time. But we haven't had Dragonflight Dungeons for a bunch of time this expansion. So if they don't do all Dragonflight Dungeons Season 4, I hope that they're willing to start returning them maybe as early as the War Within even uh, in Seasons there. Hmm. Um, I got another cook as well for affixes. Okay. Which is, okay. Let's just delete, not delete, but let's take Tyrannical and Fortified and put them in a side folder for this season. And instead, let's put... Oh. Let's put like encrypted and reaping or something or encrypted and awakened or encrypted and shrouded. And let's have those be the two affixes that rotate week to week in that slot. And then let's do the, let's do the season that way instead. Or let's come up with a new seasonal affix as well that we think is good. But if we don't, if we can't do that, if it's, if it's hard, let's just use ones that we know to be good from, from the past and put them in that spot. That's my pitch. That's a great idea, Drandos. I love that idea. Thank you, Dorky. Yeah. It's... Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, I completely I've I've had this exact take before, so I completely agree. Uh well, except <laughs> ex except for the rotating. I think mine was slightly different, and I think yours is better. Um mine was remove tyrannical fortified and instead of the those you just rotate through a bunch of awesome seasonals, but the criticism yeah. to that was if you're doing encrypted one week, and then you have to learn all the routing for that, which is like super cumber encum like uh, encumbering on tanks, and then the next week you have to learn awaken routing, and then the next week you have to learn learn reaping routing, and it's like too much. But yours of just rotating between two good ones means that 
you're not rotating between a million different things. You're learning only two of them, which you kind of already have to do for Fortified and Tyrannical anyway in some way. Uh, so, yeah, no, I, I actually, I mean, I'm obviously a huge fan of that, and I, I think keeping it to two would be really good. And, I, yeah, I mean, just imagine you go right now, current season, and it is no longer Tyrannical. I don't remember what the other mods are this week. It's, like, Spiteful and something else. You... And instead, it's just encrypted. And there are encrypted mobs uh, before every boss or in front of a few trash bags. I mean, it would just it would just be better. It just straight up. It, it, would, it would take a week or two to get used to. It would just... That affix was insane. So, I don't know. I, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I mean, like, people are playing these dungeons for, like, what? Four to six months. So, I, I think it's fine for, the dun for, the, for it to be a little bit harder to learn. Because, like, I mean... By the time people are playing these for like two, three months, they're like mostly figured out. I don't think it's like that big of a deal. Um, okay, we have like a few more minutes before the uh, Patreon question. Uh, so we did kind of, they did release like their first couple fleshed out examples of what some of these hero talents are going to look like. Um, I went over them the other day on stream uh, and I thought a few of them were amazing and one of them was horrible uh like really bad uh but the other ones were like potentially like extremely powerful and it made me kind of have some ideas about tier sets I, what was your all's initial reaction to those i haven't looked at it too much which one's the horrible one? Oh, the paladin one it's it's tragic yeah okay i would have i would have guessed that the hor the most horrible thing in these trees for me is the the one where prescience has a 25% chance to not go on cooldown. Um, that one seems like going to be, it's going to be really annoying uh, in the Chrono Warden tree. I agree though, the, so for me, both Lightsmith Paladin and Sand Lane DK seem like they are play styles that will be pretty annoying for a lot of people. Um, like the Lightsmith idea of, of plopping down weapons seems like that's probably going to not oh, be super no. fun. And then the Sand Lane playstyle of being a DK that stands in your death and decay is also obviously oh, controversial no. existing playstyle of DK. So I think that if if they're using these hero talents to make like, hey, here's one DK build where you stand in your D and D all the time, and we're taking all that out of the DK tree, and you can play the other hero talent. That's build what they said. And not stand in your death and decay anymore. Yeah, I'm all for that. I think that's. So right. that is what but, that so you yeah. you actually nailed it. I was going to come back and say that, but I listened to the DK interview and they brought that up as a concern, which by the way, I love what Blizzard is doing right now. What they're doing is they're like contacting some like creators, some especially some lesser known creators in certain uh like classes and specs and they're interview having them interview uh, a couple of really good uh, game producers and class designers, lead, lead class designer, I believe, uh, about how these work and they asked a bunch of really good questions and one of them was that Hey, well, we already kind of feel weird about the power behind standing in our D&D, &D, and I'm sure if they had paladins on uh, to talk about Consecrate. Uh, and they were like, well, like, you guys see it as that, but, like, you know, some of our ideas are, like, maybe moving that out of the base power level and moving it into this. So I, I feel like it adding that choice is really, really good, and I, I think removing it away from the baseline is, is great. Well, so the problem for, is, okay. yeah. I mean, it usually doesn't work out, though. Like, like, what if that build is just the build that sims the highest full you know in that case it's just like oh man it just feels bad right because you're basically quote unquote forced to play that play style if you're a competitive player yeah if things are if things are tuned bad it will always be bad yeah if they land at their goal there though where it's like close and where you know you can do most stuff and be fine as either one right like then that's i mean obviously that's like a very high bar to clear for the level of content that you and i do dorky right like you if 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 sand lane's one percent better than rider of the apocalypse or whatever you're gonna be or i guess Deathbringer in this case uh you would be playing sand lane right but there are a lot of players where if, if they can get it that close then and there's one that doesn't involve standing in D D, right like there's a lot of mages that wouldn't have played rune of power back when it was against encanter's flow except for the fact that it was so so much better mm -hmm. but if they had just done a little bit of a better job of keeping them close there are a lot of people who make the easy choice in those spots and Hopefully they can support that with uh, with the hero talents too. But I agree that is something where they often see like a ten percent or a five percent difference is not a big deal, which is something that most yeah. of the player base does. Oh, that's a massive big deal. That's a huge number. Yeah. Whereas one percent, less than one percent, that's that's the range where we're starting to be like, okay, the three of us are going to do the 
you know, optimal thing or whatever. Although even then, sometimes, you know, brain globals are worth saving, but uh, it's, yeah, but most players can get away with the the more easy option. And the same, so with Lightsmith as well, I'm also hoping that, I hope that with Lightsmith, they design it in such a way that the people who enjoy maintaining those weapons actually exist and do enjoy that build. And also Herald of the Sun and Templar, the other two paladin uh, hero talents, I hope are very much not like that. Oh yeah. So that you can play those instead. And as long as that's true, I'm cautiously okay with, like I'm I'm tentatively okay with Lightsmith, but I agree this was the one that was the weirdest because it does just have this, like it, I personally don't think that dropping down weapons, I mean, it sounds like power infusion, except you can't click their flame, you, their frame. You have to actually find them and drop it on them. And that sounds awful. Well, not even just the base concept of that, but that, that entire tree's synergies just sound so uninspired and uncreative and not fun uh, versus the other ones. But also, at, at, while there are times where like, oh, one build is better, they have also done that really well. Like basically for like something around like four or five, five years now they have somehow managed to have some version of momentum demon hunter old momentum and like really easy i beam demonic in demon form all the time demon hunter be really close like for a very long time like, even right now like inertia is like super super good you can play no mover in raid and it's like the same thing on most bosses and it's significantly easier so like i, I think they've been able to do that in the past and i Hope they do that. There's two things about those other trees. There's one, I'm surprised you didn't mention this as being annoying. In the sand lane tree, was that the one we saw, sand lane? I think. Yeah, the sand lane DK. Um, yeah. There was another one where uh, in your dark transformation, when you get vampiric strike, it will not consume your dots. But outside of it, vampiric strike is basically a random proc and it consumes your plague. So like imagine like right now, if you're playing the unholy build where uh, you have to like, you have the faster dots. So you usually outbreak in between each uh, unholy blight. Imagine... It's not like just one outbreak in between, but like imagine you get two procs in a row and you're like outbreaking twice then 10 seconds. Like that's going to feel horrible, like even if it's good damage. So like I, I think there's some issues with that that they can iron out. They did get asked questions like that and they were like, yeah, well, we used to even have it happen in Dark Transformation where it was going away. So they had to actually just press outbreak like three times in their... All right, looks like F, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's an F. Uh, we probably just cut to this in the edit, but if you're listening to this podcast, my internet went out. Woo! So we're going to finish this <laughs> with me on my phone and uh, probably tie up any remaining conversations in next week's episode and go to our uh, Patreon question. What is that? So it's from Valimar, and it says, if you were to give a roadmap to a completely new player to WoW who has just dabbled in M plus and LFR, what would it be? I was a diamond player in League of Legends, but until recently didn't have schedule friendly to rating, so I generally followed WoW from a distance. Now with the job change, I want to get into it. The two classes that seem most interesting to me are Paladin and Monk, as I love the flexibility to play all three roles, and I'm willing to play all three with a favoring towards tanking, then DPSing, and then healing. Uh, so TLDR, if you were to coach a brand new player to do heroic rating and get to 20 plus keys in 11.0, what advice or steps would you take? First of all, that's a based favoring towards tank, DPS, and then heal. That's true. So for me, I would say the best advice is to just learn the class. Learn the class that you're playing and play a lot of it. Attack target dummies, read up a lot about it. There's a lot of theory crafting out there. And once you know your class, then you can start branching out a little bit. Understanding the encounters understanding what other classes do. Because one of the hard parts about playing this game is not only do you have to know how your class plays, but you also have to sort of understand how your class interacts with all these other classes in the group. But I feel like that usually just comes with experience. Yeah. I. So it, it's good that you already know what you want. Like, it could have been a much harder question where it's like, hmm, what should I play? You know, he's like, we get asked that all the time on stream. At least you know, like, generally what you favor. And as far as getting better at the game, the real only answer is you just play the game all the time. And I think another question that people ask a lot is, like, how, how specifically, like, what are the nuts and bolts? Do I just, like, scour logs? I think people get way in, into logs as, like, a 
You can look at that for some uptime stuff or like, oh, I'm not pressing, I don't know, like Blade Dance enough or something. But like really, the best thing you can do is identify what character you want to play and then really try to find a smart and good player who streams that class and has a lot of videos. You don't, they don't need guides. You just need to watch them play and like look at how you're playing, look at how they're playing and then think of, watch them press their buttons and think about the decisions they're making and then apply that to how you play and be like, oh, that person is doing this. And like, I, I've always done it this way. And like, let me try that. Oh, that's better. Or maybe, oh, that's worse. I like the way I'm doing it. You know, part of the fun of WoW is solving a lot of those problems for yourself once you have a baseline understanding of how the class works and how you play that class. And that will allow, if you're like looking to like go more seriously at this and like get better at it, like really, whether you like, not like as a job, but you know, just like you just want to improve. It's really just like, Watching yourself play, watching someone else play, bounce. You're basically using that person to bounce ideas off of, even though they don't know you're doing that. <laughs> and then, you know, just come up with different ways to solve things. But you're probably going to approach it the right way. Yeah, I think the big piece of advice I'd add for this is just if you play with people you enjoy playing with, just make sure to add them and, and play with them again. Like there's a lot of people that will, you'll play with them, you'll both have a good time, and then you will go your separate ways and neither will add the other. And then it's just, that's just a tragedy whenever that happens. So. Uh, try your best in your in your pugging up the keys, you know, experience. Uh, make sure you add anybody that you like playing with, and and that will help you continue to have people you like playing with. That's actually a great point, especially from someone coming from playing a game like League of Legends. You might not have this habit of like networking. I don't know if that's like a big thing. A lot of people just play this game. They like queue up. They treat it sort of like a lobby game, sort of like League of Legends or Overwatch, or whatever. But they never try to network. And I think that's like a big mistake if you really want to get the full experience of playing World of Warcraft. Because like when you play World of Warcraft, you absolutely could just play this game largely as a solo player. But playing keys in a group, in like an actual group, is a completely different experience. And you know, doing rating with like an actual mythic rating team where you're like schedule the time and you're building group synergy. That's a very different experience from just being a pug player. And again, there's nothing wrong with being a pug player, but I do think you're missing out on a large part, as Janos has mentioned. All right, I think with that, we are uh, we are about finished up here for the week. We, <laughs> Frank has tried to res your stream, Max, and he's tried to stream to it, but I don't think it's working particularly well. So um, I think we are, we are out of here for the week. And uh, I think, so maybe we'll be back next week, depending on, I don't know, it's holiday time, so... We'll find a time if we can. Otherwise, maybe back in the new year or something. But uh, that's it for us for now. Later, gamers. Thank you all for tuning in. Yep. All right. See ya.